So we've used this guy as a stepping stone. Now I'm going to try and have a look at this guy here and see what we can get from that. Okay, so underneath this, I want us to write a little subheading. Leave space for this though. It's a bit of a spoiler what the subheading will be, but I'm going to give you an example and we're going to try and work out. We were looking at two cubed, weren't we? Two cubed. This is what happens. We know what happens when you multiply stuff. What happens when you divide? I want to know, for example, what happens if I divide two cubed by two cubed? Okay, now think, think carefully. Some of you got there really quick. I want you to make sure we all get there, right? Using this, using this law, what should we get as the answer out the end? What are we thinking? Yeah, Jessica. Wait, two raised to zero. Can you say that again, but just louder so everyone can hear? Two raised to zero. Two raised to the power of zero. Now, who agrees? Does this seem reasonable to you? Give me a thumbs up if you agree, or a thumbs down if you're like, no, no, I think it's something else. I'd, I'd love to see. I'm waiting to see if we've got, like, yeah, no, disagreement, no. I'm like, I'm like non-committal. I'm not sure what to do here. David, what do you got? I can't see your hands, man. What's happening? Are you, are you sideways? I, d I don't know. Okay. Let's think about this, right? Okay, hands down. Thank you. We've got this stepping stone here, right? Can we use this stepping stone? to try and make sense of whether this is right or not. Merrick, what are you thinking? Since the division will be 3 minus 3, hmm. so it will be 2 power 0, so it makes sense. Right, so when we divide things which have the same base, right, we subtract their powers, yeah? So, so 3 take away 3, last I checked, yeah. is 0, right? So that, that does follow. But wait a second, you, you know what 2 cubed is, don't you? It's, what's it actually equal to? Eight. It's actually equal to 8. If I gave you a question, 8 divided by 8, what would you say the answer was? One. Yeah, Louise. You'd say it's 1, right? In fact, if it was 8 divided by 8, or like 50 million divided by 50 million, anything divided by itself should give you 1, one right? So hold on a second. What we're saying is that this is also equal to 1. Now this is really weird to me, right? Because this is multiplied 2 by itself 3 times. And apparently this is multiplied 2 by itself no times. No multiplication is happening. So this is what we're seeing here. Mike, what are you thinking? Because um, like one of the a part of the index laws, one is just a normal division, so... Okay, so one is just a regular part of what happens when you divide numbers, yep. when it's equal, okay? Part of the index yeah, that's right. Now, there's another way that we can convince ourselves that we're not like going crazy, okay? Let's just think about when numbers are getting bigger. So if I said to the power of one, you should all tell me that's equal to? <laughs> it's equal to? Two. two. Very good. I just had to check. It was one of them. I knew it was one of them. What happens if I square? Four. four. What happens if I cube? You already told me this. Eight. Let's go one more for good measure to the power of four. Okay. <laughs> now, what's happening? How am I going down as I increase the power, right? From two to four, you, two. you'd multiply by two. From four to eight, you multiply by 2, you keep, you keep going, right? I could go to 32 and 64 and so on, okay? So that's what happening, what's happening as the power gets bigger. What happens as the power gets smaller? What's happening? Yeah, Louise, what do you see? Yeah, we're going to sort of hit, <laughs> you really want to get a handle on this, right? We can do it in one fell swoop, right? From 4 to 3, I divided by 2, right? From 3 to, three to 2, I divided by 2. Divide by 2 one more time. If I divide by 2 again, what should I get? One. 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 This is not where I intended for this lesson to go, but just because we're so curious, what if I went one more time? What would the power be if I decreased it by one? One more time. So, Henry. Negative one. So, what if I follow the pattern? I'm dividing by two every time. So, what should I get? What's one divided by two? 0 0.5 or a half, right? Whoa, we got fractions in here, right? Now, like I said, I'll put this in another color because we aren't mainly focusing on this today. But isn't that interesting that what we've used is this very straightforward thing we saw before. And we're like, oh, I can use this as a stepping stone to other knowledge. We summarize this power of a power in this way. Um, remember I told you to write, give space for a subheading, but I didn't tell you what the subheading was. The subheading I'd like you to put here is the zero power. When the power is zero, like this, 2 to the power of zero, or 5 to the power of zero, or like 
I don't know, Sahandu to the power of zero. That would, let's not make Sahandu to the power of zero, but that's okay. If we did, you always get one, right? I could change all these numbers to threes or fives. You'd still get one. So in, um, in red, I'm going to write down the bottom here. Any number, absolutely any number, raised to the power of zero. It's always going to be, say it with me, one. one. Every time, no matter what number you throw in there. Okay?